The truth is out there. Sometimes. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things movies get factually right and wrong about pandemics. Is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu is how we're looking at? Someone doesn't have to weaponize the bird flu. The birds are doing that. For this list, we're examining recurring medical and epidemiological concepts in movies that feature pandemics of various sorts in an effort to separate fact from fiction. In order to get scared, all you have to do is come in contact with a rumor or the television or the internet. Number 10. Animals can spread disease. Right. In 2011's Contagion, we see that the deadly MEV1 virus originated as a genetic mix of pig and bat viruses. This true concept of a virus of animal origin was based on an actual pathogen called Nipah, which first began to spread in 1998. Nipah is as deadly as Ebola, but instead of attacking blood vessels, it attacks the brain. And this reality is more relevant than ever, since multiple outbreaks, epidemics, and pandemics have sprung from animal viruses that eventually spread to humans. It's okay, baby. You'll be out of here in no time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I promise. These are called zoonotic diseases. Maintaining good hygiene and social distancing are two strategies to protect us all from viruses when they spread out of control. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Where are we? Number nine, powered air purifying respirators are real. Right. What could be holding them up? I don't know. There they are now. In 1995's Outbreak, many of the characters in the film are seen wearing PAPRs, which is an acronym for Powered Air Purifying Respirators. This is a common protective measure used by military, medical, and other official personnel in dealing with airborne pollution and pathogens. Also called positive pressure masks and blowers, the respirator is made up of a full face mask or hood attached to a blower, which acts by filtering any dangerous particles from the air. Positive, damn it. This whole damn town's infected. In fact, for more critical scenarios, there is also such a thing as a rackle suit, which, as the name implies, goes a step further by attaching the papper to a full suit. Now, state your mission. Extraction. St. Mary's Prep, 89 Phylovirus survivors. Locate, administer mosquito, red retrieve. Number eight, a virus can choose its host. Wrong. In 2013's World War Z, Jerry Lane, played by Brad Pitt, goes on a harrowing mission to discover the source of a contagious virus that turns people into zombies and also a possible vaccine. You want to help your family? Let's figure out how we stop this. It's your choice, Mr. Lane. It isn't long before he notices that the infected hosts of the virus do not attack the seriously injured or terminally ill, as they would make poor hosts for viral reproduction. How long does he have to wait? Before he's infected, not long. But that's not the question we're really asking, is it? Of course, in real life, viruses do not have the ability to think or reason or choose their new hosts. Though, of course, each has evolved to only infect certain types of living beings rather than others. He just walked right past them. Number seven, technology can immediately diagnose a virus. Wrong. You're clear. Move ahead. Near the beginning of 2007's I Am Legend, Dr. Robert Neville, played by Will Smith, is escorting his wife and daughter to a helicopter that will take them out of Manhattan. However, they must first pass a virus scanning checkpoint, which Neville's wife first fails before being scanned again to reveal no virus. All right, scan her again. It's clear. The main issue with this scene is that there is currently no scanner that can instantly definitively detect a viral infection. On the other hand, though, thermal scanners and special thermometers can near instantly detect fevers flagging a person who has any kind of elevated temperature which would indicate infection. They're already deployed at all air, land and sea checkpoints as a first screening measure to detect any potential cases. And more companies are looking to buy them as an additional safeguard. Number six, health workers need specific kinds of protection. Right. When caring for patients with the highly contagious virus in 2011's Contagion, we can see healthcare workers donning highly protective equipment. And we're setting up a special ward for medical personnel and first responders at the university. I want to move you there. This practice is absolutely accurate, as with the aforementioned PAPRs, and is essential to staying safe from dangerous microbes. Lorraine, you shouldn't be out. 
go so. home. I'll bring it to you when I get it. Of course, in other parts of the film, other medical personnel wear nothing more than gloves and masks as a preventative measure. Sadly, this reality is also tragically all too commonly accurate, as noted by Dr. Glenn Wartman, head of infectious diseases at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. He explains that during a, quote, large outbreak, it would be difficult for all healthcare workers to maintain appropriate infection prevention measures. But they need protection. Badly. Did her work involve contact with livestock in any way? Did you, did you keep any pets at home? No. Number five, patient zero is a commonly used term. Wrong. A lab technician now known as patient zero was accidentally exposed to retrovirus ALZ-113, an Alzheimer's trial drug that was being tested on chimpanzees. 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes features the use of the term patient zero to refer to the first person identified to have the disease in the film a term common in movies and even on the news. Another extremely worrying thing for authorities here is that they still haven't identified, John, who patient zero is. This is more of a colloquial term. In the medical world, the proper term to refer to such a person would be an index case or an index patient. Patient zero was actually coined based on a misunderstanding of a 1984 study of HIV, where one of the first patients was labeled as patient O, the letter O standing for out of California. The O was later misunderstood to be the numeral zero. Patient zero is the name Dr. Dritz and the medical detectives used to describe this man, the airline steward, to protect his identity. Number four, governments use viruses as biological weapons. Wrong. This is no experimental anti-serum. The 1101 was designed to kill African Motaba. Many films, like 1995's Outbreak, feature governments or militaries using or hoping to use viruses as a form of biological warfare. But now the virus comes here and two kids die, and we could have stopped it right then and there, but we don't because we have to protect the perfect biological weapon. But then the virus mutates and we can't stop it now, and we could have then. While this is a very real concern in the modern age, in 1972, the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production, and Stockpiling of Bacteriological, Biological, and Toxin Weapons was signed by many of the world's superpowers, including the United States, the United Kingdom, and at the time, the Soviet Union. As of 2018, 182 countries ratified the treaty, which bans the, quote, development, production, and stockpiling of microbes of their poisonous products for hostile reasons. Rumlow has a biological weapon. I'm on it. But vigilance is always essential across the world. Their research is of the highest importance. Its nature is classified. Number three, robotic labs are used by scientists. Right. In 2002's Resident Evil, we can see several glimpses of laboratories with functioning robotic tools. Although not much else in the film can be claimed as realistic, and the very idea may seem like science fiction, this part of the movie is quite real. In fact, even the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States uses robotic machinery. And robots can even be guided to perform certain types of surgeries. But we can certainly hope that they won't one day in the future become sentient and enslave us. That would be bad. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Number two, decontamination is a real process. Right. We start decontamination and immunization procedures now. Decontamination is definitely a real thing and a necessity. And movies, thankfully, generally acknowledge this, though some haven't portrayed decontamination in quite the right way. For example, in 1971's The Andromeda Strain, the process is both quite frightening and inaccurate. Do not be nervous. I'm not nervous. There is no process of decontamination that involves burning the outer epithelial layer of the skin, which would in essence be an excruciating full-body sunburn. You will notice a fine white ash on your body. This is the outer epithelial layers of your skin that have been burned away. Other films, like 1982's E.T. the Extraterrestrial, feature individuals decontaminating before entering an infected area, when in reality, those exiting an infected area would decontaminate themselves before re-entering the safe area. And a chemical shower is often the preferred method of decontamination, rather than ambiguous-looking fog, as is done in the film. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the amount of time it takes to find a cure. Wrong. If we even had a viable vaccine right now, we would still have to do human trials and that would take weeks. As we've seen, contagion hit a lot of home runs in terms of factual accuracy. Writer Scott Z. Burns consulted medical specialists in creating the story, while the producers were able to consult representatives from the World Health Organization. In spite of the research, however, the sheer speed with which the film's protagonists develop a vaccine is too good to be true. We may never know where this disease came from, but we do know that this vaccine is a result of the courage and perseverance of a remarkable few. In real life, creating safe and effective vaccines takes much time and effort. The WHO estimates that it could take nearly a year to manufacture and distribute the necessary amount of the vaccine to stop the spread of the virus, which so far has taken over 26 million lives worldwide. In fact, according to the former acting director of the CDC, Dr. Richard Besser, quote, the rapid creation of a vaccine and contagion can contribute to the false expectation of what science can do during a public health crisis. Bummer. The next citizens to receive the MEV1 vaccination are those born on the date January 11th. January okay. 11th. All right. 144. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.